the present of this inaugural session for Vekri Sampar, a veteran and beloved leader for Vekri Sampar, leaders of the Communist Party of India Marxist from the Diet, leaders of the left parties, the Communist Party of India, the CPI administration and the SUCI Communists and dear comrades and observers who are attending this 22nd conference of the Tamil Nadu State Committee of the CPI. First of all, I would like to convey on behalf of the Central Committee, a warm fraternal greeting to all of you who are attending this conference. Dear comrades, you are all aware that we are going to hold the 22nd Congress of the Party at Hyderabad from the 18th of April to the 22nd of April. And it is in preparation for this Congress that we are holding the same conference here in Kutukudi. Kutukudi is a historic center of the freedom struggle of our country. And Kutukudi is associated with the name of Rio de Janeiro, Bravo C, and Sudhamani of Nandia. Kutukudi also has grown up prominent leaders of the Congress movement to Tamil Nadu. One of them is sitting here, Comrade Eddie Kalkaya, Comrade Nalita 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 from this area. And therefore, we see an unbroken line from the anti-imperial struggle to the working class movement and the Congress movement here. Today in our country, we are faced with a serious challenge. The challenge of a right-wing communal offensive. At no time in our country we have to face such a serious threat to our country's democratic and secular principles. At such a time, and go ahead in Tamil Nadu. While doing so, you must also keep in mind the current international situation. Our party central committee has adopted a draft political resolution for the 22nd Congress. And that resolution will be available for you to discuss and give your opinions before we assemble in Hyderabad. But I'd like to briefly tell you our assessment of the international and political situation and how we see the future tasks that we have to undertake in our country. For the last few years, we have seen that neoliberalism, the dominant ideology and philosophy of finance capitalism, which has dominated the world for the last more than three decades. That neoliberal ideology and policies are in crisis. And it is the crisis of neoliberalism which has resulted in major political 
social and economic changes in the world. It is this crisis of neoliberalism which has led to the financial crisis of 2007-2008, a crisis which has not yet been fully overcome by the capitalist countries. And it is this crisis of neoliberalism which has produced various new political currents. In America, we have seen the election of Donald Trump as the president, a billionaire with extreme right-wing views. It is this crisis which has led to a vote in the referendum in Britain to leave the European Union, what is called Brexit. And it is this crisis of neoliberalism which is leading to growing inequalities in all the capitalist countries. And because of that, utilizing the discontent among the people, many right-wing forces and parties, extreme right-wing groups have emerged and are trying to take power. So this rightward shift which has taken place in many countries in the world is also reflected in our country. The right-wing offensive we are seeing in India is part of this global phenomenon. But at the same time, the forces of resistance, those who are firmly opposing the neoliberal policies, wherever the left forces are there, left parties and organizations are there, which are presenting an alternative program and are fighting against the impact of the neoliberal policies, there we are finding that the left is making progress, while overall there is this right-wing shift. As against the social democratic parties, which have all surrendered to neoliberalism in Europe, they have all started now collapsing or declining. And in their place, new left forces have arisen, whether it is in France, whether it is in Greece, whether it is in Portugal, and finally in the United Kingdom too. The Labour Party, which was the traditional social democratic party of Britain, today under the leadership, a new leader, Jeremy Corbyn, has adopted a left program and that has led to the revival of the party, the popularity of the party. Similarly, we find in France a new left formation which was able to get 20% of the vote in the presidential election. Similarly, we saw in Greece a new party being formed, Syriza. So, unless the left firmly takes up the fight against neoliberalism and does not compromise with the neoliberal regime, then they are able to advance. So, while the right-wing forces are still dominant in Europe and America, new left forces have arisen and that is the hope for the future. The other new feature is that we know that imperialism led by the United States of America has been jointly, all the imperialist countries have been jointly working to exploit the rest of the world. And the contradictions between the imperialist countries have not been sharpening. In fact, they were muted in the last number of years. But now, because of this neoliberal crisis of neoliberalism, we find that contradictions between the imperialist countries, their differences are coming 
forward. They are developing. President Trump becoming the President of the United States, his policies are being opposed by many of the allies of the United States of America. He is pursuing an economic policy which is harmful for the, his European allies. So new contradictions and conflicts are developing between these imperialist countries which will help the revolutionary and progressive forces in the coming days to exploit these differences to advance their agenda. Just like what is happening in Europe and the rest of the world where the right-wing governments and forces are dominant but there are places where the left is able to assert itself and make advances. So also in South Asia, in our own region, in the neighborhood of India, most of these governments, including Indian government, are right-wing governments. But we also have, within this right-wing dominant atmosphere, we have seen the advance made by the Nepal Communists. For the first time in the parliament elections held three months ago, the two communist parties which unitedly fought the election, the CPN UML and the CPN Maoist Center, they have together got 62% of the seats in the parliament. That is just short of the two-thirds majority. And Nepal will have a purely communist government for the first time. There were earlier coalition governments with the communists and non-left parties. But this will be the first purely communist government in Nepal. This is a significant development for our region. Coming to the national situation, three years ago in our party congress in Vishakhapatnam, in 21st Congress, we had said a big change has taken place in our country after the Lok Sabha election of May 2014. The Bharati Janta Party came with an absolute majority in the Lok Sabha. And we said that this means there is a right-wing offensive unfolding in our country. And this right-wing offensive is going to lead to more aggressive pursuit of the anti-people neoliberal policies. It is going to lead to an aggressive push for the Hindutva agenda of the RSS. And it will also strengthen and intensify India's collaboration and dependence on the United States of America. And all this is going to lead to the imposition or beginnings of an authoritarianism in India. அடுத்து நம்முடைய தேசிய சூழலின் சில பிரதான அம்சங்களை பார்க்கலாம் கடந்த மூன்றாண்டுகளுக்கு முன்னால் விசாகப்பட்டினத்திலே நம்முடைய இருபத்தி ஓராவது அகில இந்திய மாநாடு நடந்தபோது நம்முடைய அரசியல் தீர்மானத்திலே சில முக்கியமான விஷயங்களை குறிப்பிட்டு இருந்தோம் ரெண்டாயிரத்தி பதினாலு லோக்சபா தேர்தலுக்கு பிறகு இந்திய அரசியலிலே ஒரு மிகப்பெரிய மாற்றம் ஏற்பட்டு இருக்கிறது பாரதிய ஜனதா கட்சி மக்களவையிலே அறுதி பெரும்பான்மை பெற்றிருக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு அரசியல் சூழல் நிலவுகிறது இது சில குறிப்பான பாதிப்புகளை ஏற்படுத்தும் என்று நாம் கடந்த அரசியல் தீர்மானத்திலே சுட்டிக்காட்டினோம் ஒன்று இந்திய அரசியலிலே ஒரு வலதுசாரி திருப்பம் ஏற்பட்டு வலதுசாரி தாக்குதல்கள் அதிகரிக்கக்கூடிய அபாயம் இது 
மக்கள் விரோத நவீன தாராளமய கொள்கைகளை தீவிரப்படுத்துகிற பாதையிலே செல்லும் அதே போல ஆர் எஸ் எஸ் இந்துத்துவ நிகழ்ச்சி நிரலுக்கு கூடுதல் உந்து சக்தி அளிக்கக்கூடிய நிகழ்வாக இருக்கும் அதே போல அமெரிக்காவினுடைய கேந்திர பங்காளியாக அவர்களோடு மிக நெருக்கமான கூட்டாளியாக இந்தியா இருக்கக்கூடிய சூழலை இது இன்னும் கூர்மைப்படுத்தும் வலுப்படுத்தும் இவற்றையெல்லாம் செய்ய வேண்டும் என்று சொன்னால் நிச்சயமாக இந்த அரசு எதேச்சாதிகார பாதையை பின்பற்றும் என்கிற இந்த அம்சங்களை நாம் நம்முடைய அரசியல் தீர்மானத்தில் சுட்டிக்காட்டினோம் which we noted in the last party congress we have seen all these four features have got aggravated and intensified under the modi government and what has come in place or put in place is an authoritarian communal regime we had said in our party program that the bjp is not an ordinary bourgeois party because it is a party which is run and controlled by the rashtriya swayamsevak sangh and the rss has a fascist outlook and ideology so what is the two characteristics of this government one it is the most naked advocate of the corporates and the big bourgeoisie of our country and we have seen in the last 3 years every economic policy has been designed to serve the interests of the big bourgeoisie of our country and international finance capital as a result we have seen the deepening of the agrarian crisis we have seen a slowdown in industrial production and we have seen a rapid increase in unemployment all this has led to an economic slowdown so the modi government's performance in these last 3 years has to sum up in one sentence is a anti working class anti peasant anti people policies and it is this which this government brought in demonetization the effects of that we have seen in all sectors of our economy and the people following that has come the gst which has further increased the burdens on the small shopkeepers small traders small businesses and the common people hindutva offensive the game plan of the rss to subvert all the institutions of the state to infiltrate rss personnel in key positions that has been unfolding in the last four years since the modi government came into power this imposition of hindutva in our constitutional bodies in our higher educational institutions in our cultural institutions is one aspect the other is the various outfits of the rss are at the ground level creating communal tensions targeting the muslim minorities 
the most widespread attacks have been in the name of protection of the cow, the cow rakshaks, the squads or gangs who have been set up to attack innocent Muslim cattle traders or those who are dealing with cattle. More than 30 Muslims have been killed by the Gaur Rakshaks in the last three years. Along with that is the efforts to infiltrate and control the judiciary, the armed forces and the bureaucracy. And fascistic type attacks on intellectuals and cultural personalities who do not support Hindutva and uphold secular democratic values. This has been the second pronged attack. One is the neoliberal offensive and the second the Hindutva offensive that the people have had to face. This is a government which came into office by claiming that they will produce two crore jobs a year. This is a government which claimed that there will be no corruption. We will ensure a corruption-free government. Both these have been shown to be total failures. Today in our country, the rate of unemployment has grown rapidly in the last three years. And not a question of two crores, this government is not even able to produce 10 lakh new jobs every year. And as far as corruption goes, we have seen how this government is covering up the deal or agreement for the fighter planes that was bought from France, the Rafale planes. An agreement was signed during the previous government. But after this government came into office, Prime Minister Modi goes to France and suddenly scraps that old agreement and signs a new agreement to buy 36 fighter planes. When asked about the price of those planes, cost of those planes, they say that is classified information, we cannot give it. They have refused to give it in parliament too. But we all know the rough cost of the total deal. And we also know that one company of Anil Ambani is going to get the contract for producing the various components for this plane, what is called offset, 50% offset, which is going to amount to 21,000 crores of rupees. Earlier agreement, it was the public sector company, HAL, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited in Bangalore, which is going to do this job of producing components. But now it has been given to a Ambani company who has no record in this area of defense production. This is the first large-scale instance of corruption which has come under the Modi government. The, this brings us to the program and task that we must take up ahead. We have to be able to develop and intensify these struggles and movements against the onslaught of these economic policies of the BJP central government and the various state governments run by the bourgeois parties. And we must bring into play the widest forces, build united struggles 
of the workers, the peasants, the agricultural workers, the employees, the students, youth, women, Dalits, Adivasis, etc. This is the immediate task we have because it is through building such movements and struggles that we can mobilize all those people including those people who were earlier under the influence of the BJP and the communal forces. We have to build such united movements and struggles. This is the first task. The second and the third area is this is a party and the RSS which believes in Hindi, Hindu, Hindustan. So the attack on the Hindutva ideology is an upper caste Brahminical ideology. It will attack Dalits, it will attack Adivasis, it will attack women, try to bring them, co-opt them into the Hindutva framework. So we have to take up the issues of social oppression of discrimination which is affecting all these sections of people and build powerful struggles on social issues and fourthly more and more this government is authoritarian democratic rights are under attack this is a government which wants to undermine the constitution itself so the widest unity should be built to defend democracy and defend democratic rights. Simultaneously, we must take up the struggle against the Hindutva communal forces. It is by combining these two struggles that we can effectively fight back this right-wing offensive and isolate and defeat the communal forces. So, we have to be able to increase the independent strength of the CPI through conducting the struggles and movements, through conducting the political and ideological struggles alongside against the right-wing Hindutva forces. And at the same time, we have to strengthen left unity so that this unity of the left forces will become the lever for rallying all other democratic forces. Our party congress resolution has reiterated that what is required is to build the left and democratic front which can be the only real alternative to the bourgeois landlord classes and their policies. So, in increasing the independent strength of the party, strengthening left unity and struggling and going ahead for forging the left and democratic alliance and left and democratic front. This must be our tactical goal in the coming period. The main task in the coming days is to defeat the BJP and remove the BJP from power at the center. For that, we have to build up the struggles and movements so that the largest sections of people are mobilized in this fight against the BJP. Without that, just by election tactics and election arithmetic, we won't be able to defeat the BJP. So today, when we meet in, when we meet in Hyderabad for our party congress, we want to give a clarion call that build the widest struggles, build the united struggles against the BJP government's policies, its communal agenda and its anti-democratic authoritarian attacks. And 
the success we achieve in mobilizing the widest sections of people, in uniting with other secular and democratic forces to conduct such wide movements and struggles will be crucial by the time the Lok Sabha elections are held in 2019. We cannot compromise with neoliberal policies, nor can we join hands with those who advocate neoliberal policies, because it is these policies which are creating the grounds for the communal forces to grow. So the fight against neoliberal policies and the fight against communism will be carried forward by us. The BJP and the RSS have targeted the CPIM and the left because they know we are the most consistent and determined fighters against the Hindutva forces. Whether it is in Kerala or Tripura or West Bengal, where the left has the strongest basis, the BJP and the RSS are working round the clock. They are launching attacks on our party. We have seen how many of our comrades have been killed in Kerala by the RSS. In Tripura now, the elections are being held tomorrow on the 18th, the assembly election. The BJP has poured in hundreds of crores of rupees in the small state of 35 lakhs. They have sent thousands of their RSS and BJP workers in the last one year, according to their own statement, 50,000 people have gone into Tripura over the course of one year. To, because they had no party there, they had to organize the party. The bulk of the Congress party has defected to the BJP there. Out of the 51 candidates of the BJP, 41 are Congress people, Congress leaders now. So the fight is for the first time in India. There is a fight between the left front and the CPM on one side and the BJP on the other. And tomorrow the people of Tripura will vote. And the results when it comes out on the 3rd of March will show that the left front and the CPIM have defeated the BJP. This will be the beginning of the process of rallying all the forces to fight the BJP and I'm sure that the success we'll achieve in Kupra will set the mood and the tone for the coming days so that we can rally all the secular and democratic forces to fight the BJP. So comrades, here in Tamil Nadu, in your state conference, you will be discussing the work we have done in the last three years since our last state conference. You will be setting out the political and organizational tasks for the coming three years. The political situation in Tamil Nadu is fluid now. A lot of changes have taken place and a lot of changes will take place in the coming days. So how do we intervene to advance our party, to advance the left movement, to rally all the left and democratic forces and to present a political alternative to the existing setup where you have the two major Dravidian parties, both are either one in a disarray, the other is in stagnation and decline. So the task ahead for you will be debated and discussed and adopted here. I wish you all success in your deliberations and I am sure that this conference in Tutukudi will be a milestone in the development of our party and the left and communist movement in Tamil Nadu. Thank you very much.